Hi folks, Doyle Dykes here. Welcome to my Sunday string along. I just decided to pull this old uh, guild out and out of my arsenal here and play a little bit for you. Wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, surely he bore our sorrows forever. By his stripes we are I always like to say arrangements while you wait, but <laughs> that's a beautiful song. And he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace, our peace, according to Isaiah 53, was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. You see, that was prophesied hundreds of years before Christ ever lived. And so God had a plan. He knew that Jesus one day would die and be resurrected from the dead for our sins and also pay the price for our healing, thank God. And we can still believe God for healing because of what Jesus had, has already done for us. Um, I heard a pastor this week, uh, uh, Pastor Johnson, Bill Johnson, and he, he was talking about a, a couple that took... Uh, uh, the mother-in-law, uh, there were three of them, uh, to, to the Holy Land. And while what they were there, the mother-in-law passed away. And so they told this, uh, the husband, so, well, we can send your mother-in-law home. It will cost $5,000, or you can bury her right here, had the funeral here for $150. Mm, I think we'll just send her home. And, he, and the guy asked, he said, well, I don't know if you understood, but it, it, it's going to cost $5,000 to send her home. Or you can do the burial right here and the funeral and everything for $150. He said, well, he said, I heard y'all buried somebody here in three days. Well, you know, uh, I just can't take that chance. <laughs> and that terrible, what a terrible joke to start off the Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter, folks. Happy Easter. But indeed... He is risen. He is indeed, he is risen. So I thank the Lord for that. God bless you folks. Thank you so much for joining in today. 
there are a lot of things I'd like to talk about today, but the most important thing, of course, is the resurrection of Christ. And so I'll put this guitar away. Isn't this a gorgeous guitar? By the way, this is the one that Ren Ferguson built himself, and a uh, beautiful guitar. This was my Guild signature model, and people still talk about it. There's a dead strings and all, folks, and see if I have another uh, guitar stand all the way back here in the back. And notice, I'm, <laughs> of all things, I'm wearing my blue camo shirt here today uh, in case, you know, I go to the some woods that are blue and uh, you can't see me anymore. <laughs> My grandson uh, Emmett, uh, he wanted a camo shirt because if he if he wore one, you wouldn't be able to see him. So we got him one for Christmas, and we went over to his house. He put it on this uh, camo outfit, and he went outside, and I said, well, "Where's Emmett? I, I can't see you. You must have that camo shirt on." <laughs> oh my lord! Sorry, folks, and uh, getting maybe I'm getting off on the wrong foot here today, but uh, but I feel so good, and I'm so thankful. Uh, for the resurrecting power of Christ. And you know, the Bible talks about knowing, if we know God, that we can know God and the power of his resurrection. In uh, Philippians chapter three, verse 10 and 11, this is out of the message. I gave up all the inferior stuff so I could know Christ personally, experience his resurrection power, be a partner of his suffering, and go all the way with him to death itself. If there is any way to get in on the resurrection from the dead, I wanted to do it. And isn't that amazing? That's a great way to say it. And that's out of the, the Message Bible, Philippians 3, 10, and 11. So that also, another translation, so that we may know him and the power of his resurrection. You know, there's no other religion in the world where you can actually know Christ, you know, and, and the bones of every prophet of every religion are still somewhere in the ground, but not that of Jesus, because he's the only one that was ever resurrected. You know, I heard a guy the other day, and I admire him greatly. I love his uh, show on YouTube. He says, well, I'm, I'm not a very religious person. Well, in some ways, I'm not either. You know, somebody that's very devoted to God or gods, and so there's no differentiation or, you know, between uh, whether it's, it's a Christ or Buddhism or, or whatever it might be. Uh, Shintoism, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, if you're religious, it could be any religion, you know, but Christ or Christianity is not, a mere religion. It's a relationship that you can, you can actually know God. And the, the Bible says also in Daniel eleven thirty two. but the people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. Isn't that beautiful? So you can actually know God and the power of his resurrection. And uh, I wanted to give an example. Uh, oh, by the way, just let me get this out of the way. A little business here. If you want to support us, you can buy a t-shirt or you can buy strings on our website. These are GHS strings. Of course, they're the ones that I use, Doyle Dyke strings. And uh, also uh, my book, I have the audio version that I read and or you can get the analog version. <laughs> and they both also uh, contain a DVD. It has Dwayne Eddy on it and some really great players. Um, a, a, a really true Nashville recording uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I mean, it's one of the greatest times in my life. Uh, this is one of my favorite records uh, that I ever recorded. Did all this at Eric Johnson's place and David Huff. Most of the recording was done at Eric's place. Some of it was done at David's. I think maybe a song or two. But this is an all-worship record. Um, and it has Were You There and also the Easter song that I'll be doing on this show. And I may just do it as a YouTube song. May do this a little bit different, folks. May do this, um, yeah, I think I'll do that. I think I'll do my, my songs and my music maybe separate from the string along, if that's okay. But we'll do it, at, it'll come out on uh, at the same time. This It'll come out this morning. And so uh, I just wanted to uh, 
uh, and share some of these things. There are a lot of albums that I've done through the years, folks, and you can get all these on our site or you can go to your favorite download store, iTunes, whatever it may be, Amazon, whatever it is. And, uh, and then this is a, a DVD. This is one of my favorite things that I've ever done. And we just started, uh, the only place you can get this is on our website. And that's Live Sessions. Did this at Ricky Skagg Studio. I'll be with Ricky uh, for a special fundraiser of the Museum of the Bible, which I'm very, very excited about. There's going to be a lot of great folks there. And uh, I'm excited about that. And uh, somebody told me... Uh, the owners of, I think, Hobby Lobby will be, you know, there. And also, uh, they use my music at Hobby Lobby. I mean, these are really good Christian folks. If there's a Hobby Lobby near you, I think it'd be a great a great thing to, uh, to uh, patronize them. But they've been using, I think, Nothing's Too Good for Friend and maybe White Rose for Heidi, but they've been using my music for many years on their intercom system at Hobby Lobby. Uh, I want to read something from a friend of mine's book here. This is Dallas Home. And I want to continue on with the thought of knowing the resurrected Christ. To know God and to know the Father and have a relationship with Father God, have a relationship with Jesus, have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit, to be able to know Him and know him in the power of his resurrection is no, to know Christ. But this is uh, something that, that Dallas uh, said. He was one of my very favorite uh, Christian artists growing up, still is. And Dallas came out to one of my concerts. I mentioned this a, a string along or two ago. But uh, he said, I could normally write a song. In other words, he was very gifted in, in, uh, in songwriting. But he said that uh, he wanted to write some new material when he uh, got the opportunity to work with uh, David Wilkerson. So one day I sat down with a pencil and a tablet, tried to come up with some new lyrical and musical ideas. This generally had not been a difficult process. In fact, he said some of my better songs were written just getting out a pencil and paper and working hard. However, this particular day, nothing. <laughs> Not one idea came to mind, not even a, a note upon which to build. Frustrating. He said, with a sense of desperation, I began to pray for help and guidance. You know, it's like, well, it's all, you've heard people say, all we can do now is pray. <laughs> Why don't you start out that way? <laughs> Why do we wait to the end to pray? We should start with prayer, you know, and uh, praise God. Uh, you know, when you do that, I was, I was playing in Seattle and uh, a number of years ago for Bruce Adolf. And, and he just got up and introduced me. We weren't really thinking about it. And Bruce is one of the finest Christian men I've ever met. But here I came on stage and all of a sudden it never happened to me before, but I got these cramps in my arm. I couldn't play. My, my fingers were going like this and uh, I just stopped. And I'm, I think I said, well, I need some water for one thing. But I said, you know, we didn't, we didn't pray. And, of course, it was an ongoing thing. It had been going on all day, but we didn't pray before he introduced me. And I really uh, felt like we should do that. I said, let's just start over. And when we prayed, I mean, I didn't have any problems after that again. You know, so uh, when we said, well, all we can do now is pray. Well, we should start off that way. <laughs> and Bruce, I'm sure you would, you totally agree. And you remember that time, but that never happened. It never happened before. It has happened since, I'll have to say. But I always take time to just, to just uh, pray. And it's always an indication that, Lord, I just thank you for being with us today and to concentrate more on him. And then he always helps me out. Ever notice how frustration and desperation often lead to prostration, in other words, spiritually and literally before the Holy God? Suddenly, through prayer, we become so keenly aware of our inadequacies and absolute independence upon God, with, even for our own thoughts. And he says, we should, uh, wouldn't we all do well? In fact, he says, I forget to always make prayer our first response to any and every challenge. One of my favorite scriptures, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And he said he began to pray and, and, uh, 
And he said, Lord, and it, out of his own frustration, he said, Lord, if you were seeing this, what would you say? What would you do? He said, it was almost like I blurted out, Lord, well, please tell me, what would you say if you were singing this? And that that's actually also knowing the Lord, you know? But he said, uh, it's like, come on, I got to know. Come on, Lord, what would you say? What would you sing? And then in a way, he's like a young child might draw back after having expressed themselves a little too pointedly to a parent. I drew back a bit to consider what I had just asked. More importantly, the way in which I had asked was now a concern. I said, oh, oh, you know. And uh, But he said, but God loves honesty and honest words and honest emotions. I was pretty sure he's been asked harder questions from others down through the centuries, from Job to John, always questions and always answers. So God answered me that day with an audible voice and he says, or, and he said, it wasn't, uh, let me, let me read this again. And so God answered me that day, not in an audible voice or in lightnings and thunderings. I can't even say I heard a still small voice, but I knew that God was speaking. He said, it was like talking or taking dictation from an inaudible unseen benefactor. And, uh, let me grab this guitar and, uh, just uh, this is what he said go ahead drive the nails in my hands laugh at me where you stand go ahead say it isn't me the day will come when you will see he said, the day will come. He said, I was seeing and hearing with eyes, with the eyes and ears of my heart, not in my head. There was a deeper realization that it was in fact my sins that drove those nails. In the past, I had doubted, I had mocked, but he loved me and he saved me. He called me and was now telling me in no uncertain terms what to tell other doubters and mockers. Mark my name, my love for you is still the same. Go ahead, bury me, but very soon I will be free and I'll rise. power on earth can tie me down. Yes, I'll rise again. Death can't keep me in the ground. And he said it was like taking dictation. So what would you say? And that's what he said. And, you know, I believe he's saying that today. And, you know, I, I believe with all my heart that Jesus is alive and well today. I believe that he lives. The Bible says in Romans in 10 and 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you believe he lived and he died and he rose again, I have, I have witnessed this to so many people and seen so many people get saved and receive Christ in their life from just saying that, saying, I believe you lived and you died. And, and let me tell you something, Christianity is a wonderful thing. We have nothing to be ashamed of. To be a Christian, I heard a guy the other night, and I admire him greatly because he has a great store and a guitar thing. And he said, and he was talking about benevolence and giving. And he said, well, we, you know, and he was talking about some other artists he got involved in this, and they've raised hundreds and thousands, probably millions of dollars by now because he's done a long time to a, to a, a a place that feeds people out in Los Angeles, you know. 
And he said, well, I chose this particular place because there's so many of them out there, he says, that are Christian-based. And nothing wrong with that, but he said, you know, in order to get food, he said, they have to listen to a sermon or something, you know, and there's always a catch. He said, I like to, to, to you know, to uh, support those. There's no catch. You just feed them, and, and, uh, and I guess they just get on their way. But the thing is, what he doesn't know or realize maybe or hasn't maybe thought it through enough is uh, they are teaching people a better way of life. You know, as the old saying is, give a man a fish, you'll feed him a meal. Teach a man to fish, you'll feed him for life. And so that, and, and I know some of these other uh, places out in, uh, in, in these centers out in, in Los Angeles that uh, that are cha- they, their lives have changed, and also in Chicago, there's a man uh, not too long ago that gave me several hundred dollars, just handed me I think three hundred dollars for Christmas at a church. He said, "I want you to have this," and I said, "No, sir, I can't take that." He said, "Oh yeah, you can too." He said, "God told me to give you this." He said, "Man, you don't know where I come from." He said, "I was a street person." He said, I was living on the streets. I was on drugs. I was, you know, I was in a gang. And he says, I came to Christ through this ministry. And now he's one of their elders. And what a blessing he was to me. And his life totally turned around. I've seen businessmen that were just rough and gruff. And God just turned them into a a, a Holy Ghost teddy bear. (laughs) Some of the nicest, most giving people that I've ever seen. Uh, there are, I know a number of wealthy people, I'm talking about that worth hundreds of millions of dollars or even billions of dollars that love Jesus with all their heart. It is not impossible to be rich and to love Christ. It's hard. I mean, it, it's difficult. Jesus, how difficult is, is it? But it can happen. Only God, only God can do that. It's because of the resurrection power of Christ. I want to read a quote here too. Money can never buy everything your heart desires. Money can never buy everything your heart desires. It won't buy love or health or true happiness. Who said that? Elvis Presley. (laughs) But he also said this, I've had a pretty good lesson on human nature. It's more important to try to surround yourself with people. And you know, he always had a great entourage behind, around him all the time. Live in his house or wherever he was. Surround yourself with people who can give you a little happiness because you only, he said, you can only pass through this life once, Jack, is the way it says here. You don't come back for an encore. But you know, honestly, you do. You do. But it's a whole lot. It's not just an encore. (laughs) Let me tell you something. A life in Christ and our life in heaven after this life. There is life. If there was no resurrection, there'd be no hope. If there's no resurrection, there'd be no Christianity. I mean, we'd just be like some dead religion like all the others. And you can have a relationship with Christ. You can know him and know God. You see, there is a, a difference now in resurrection and resuscitation. I heard this from Rick Warren, one of my favorite teachers. And, uh, uh, you know, people die all the time and they're resuscitated. And you get these books or listen to the tapes or what, or CDs or, or YouTube, whatever it is, of people that died and went to heaven, all that kind of stuff. Let me tell you, so we're, not, we're talking about a resurrection of, a, of, of being dead for like three days and being brought back to life. It is absolutely impossible to mankind to do that. You can't do that. I have a friend of mine, George Sabalik, and now George contacted me this week. I'm sorry I haven't contacted you back. I did, but I haven't given you the answer you were looking for yet. I need to check into it. But George, very much alive today, but George died at a NAMM show at the Martin booth playing the guitar. He was walking off the stage and boom, had a massive heart attack right there and fell dead. And they brought in uh, the, the paramedics and he was dead for, I believe, he told me six or seven minutes he was dead, pronounced dead. And of course they resuscitated him. 
It could have been longer than that, but it was amazing that he was dead several minutes. I mean, because your brain, I mean, he, he, he could have come back as a vegetable. I mean, it was amazing that he is still alive, but he's alive and he's a worship leader today. He's a pastor today and uh, in Southern California. George, I'm glad you're still alive, pal. <laughs> that, you know, I was playing one time and I had this wireless unit. And uh, George is probably laughing right now, but I was in Southern California and I was playing with my wireless guitar and I started walking through the aisles and you walk so far and then things kind of back then, you know, especially the signal wasn't that long. So you'd start losing signal or you'd hear something and your fingers were touching the strings before you'd hear it. And so you could only go so far, but I, I was walking through the aisles. I had a pretty good signal, you know, and I was... I was just ministering. I think what I played last week, my Jesus, I love thee. And, uh, oh, man, I just felt such a, a power and an anointing. And, and I just felt, I saw this old man just out of the corner of my eye, and I just stood, stood there, and I just kept playing, you know. And then I kind of felt a release, and I just kind of walked and went around the other way. And when I went around to the other aisle, I noticed these men came back, and they were praying for this man, and he died. He died in church, and uh, he had, somebody told me that day, yeah, the oil knocked him dead. <laughs> Great joke, guys, but, uh, but, but it was alarming because, I mean, they brought in, uh, the ambulance came in, and he was dead for a number of, of minutes as well. But they revived him, resuscitated him. But uh, and in fact, you know what? He actually said, why did you bring him back? Why am I here now? He said, I was there. So I don't know what people see. I don't know all about that. But we're talking about here, we're talking about a real resurrection of somebody that has been dead, even in the place of rotting, like uh, Lazarus. He had been dead four days already. And Jesus was talking to Mary, his sister, in John chapter 11. And in fact, he talked about the resurrection. Well, I know, you know, that everybody will will uh, uh, you know will come back to life at the at the resurrection then Jesus looked at her and uh, I, I don't have the right place here actually I think I had it in my other other uh, Bible but Jesus looked at her and he says I am the resurrection and the life I am the resurrection and and the life though he were dead if a person believes in me though he were dead yet shall he live and then he went to the grave and they opened the, 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 the place where Lazarus was. And they said, well, Lord, everybody kept saying they were in unbelief. And Jesus wept. I believe he wept. A lot of people say, oh, hey, what compassion he had. But everywhere he stood, everywhere, every person that came to him were doubting. I think it, he was just overwhelmed with this because he did love him. But nobody believed that at that time that he was truly the resurrection. He wasn't, I mean, he, he was the resurrection. It wasn't just he knew about the resurrection. He was the resurrection. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And, and, uh, and he said, Lazarus, come forth. I heard an old preacher say one time, if he hadn't called his, him out by name, Every person in that tomb would have come out <laughs> and walked out of the grave, you know, because of the power of the resurrection, uh, resurrected, Je or, or the power of Jesus, who has the power of resurrection within him. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. So the same God that worked through the voice of his son when he said, come forth, you know, that same God, that same heavenly father, it would also raise Jesus from the dead. And it was also uh, prophesied hundreds of years before that, that Jesus even lived that this would happen. And this is in, in the book of Isaiah, in fact, uh, it talks about in Isaiah 53, it says he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. It started off, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. It says he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. And you remember that when he was brought uh, forth. Uh, in fact, he, he was taken from prison and from judgment, 
Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit found in his mouth. And yet he pleased the Lord to bruise him. It, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. To grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall many righteous servant justify many, or by my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. He took on our sin. He took on our iniquities. And he died for our sins. But if he wasn't resurrected, then it was all for nothing. It's just absolutely for nothing. So how do we know that Jesus was resurrected? How do we know that? Well, for one reason, eyewitnesses. I mean, you know, when Mary, she, went, she saw him first, went back and told Peter and James, I believe, and then the other apostles came. Uh, came and so then you so you have uh, those apostles and then the next thing you know Jesus was walking around for forty days and there were like five hundred more people so you uh, folks we are not the minority in this world today we are the majority if you even say Alexa what is the largest religion in the world she'll say Christianity. Well, to over two, I think around 2.2 .2 or 2.3 billion followers, billion people. I mean, you could take all of China, the population of China, the population of the United States, and the population of all of Europe, and that's like pretty much the uh, amount of Christians. I think there are even more Christians than that. And so one out of three people living on this earth today are believers in Christ. So we are in no way the minority. Don't think that we are powerless. And thank God that, that uh, I mean, our power is in the Lord. Our power is not just in numbers. Our power is in the Lord. But if you were to say, how can you prove? I mean, you can go to any court system, and what do they look for? Witnesses. And said so that, well, there, were, uh, there was one witness and then all of a sudden there are 12 and then there, and then the upper room was 120. Jesus went around and, and in fact there were 500, somewhere around 500. And then all of a sudden it multiplied into thousands of people. And then in Acts 1 and 8, what did he do? He says, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. He said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you shall be my witness. Power to witness. He said, you shall receive power, skill, Talent and expertise. I did this a few uh, string alongs ago. You shall receive skill, talent, and expertise to be able to be my witnesses throughout the entire world. And it's happened because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You know, as I think about, you know, the, uh, in Jeremiah 3, or actually Jeremiah 31, verse 3, the Bible says here that, that he loves us with an everlasting love. How could he love us with an everlasting love if we're not going to be around for everlasting? I mean, how long is everlasting? It's everlasting. <laughs> I mean, think about it. In John three sixteen, for God so loved the world. It's probably the most important, perhaps, verse in the Bible. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Some people call me an evangelist. I mean, I'm just a guitar player, but the, the word evangelist is actually a good, a good word, I think. Because I'll always tell, I mean, when I got saved, I'm, I was 11 years old, and a lot of you have heard this before, but I was 11 years old. I raised my hands to the Lord. I said, God, give me a job to do, and I'll always tell people about you. And I continue to do that to this day. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish or believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
You know, most pastors where I go, they give an invitation, you know. They invite people to come to know Christ. I heard R.C. Sproul's, the great preacher, I heard him say this one at one time. He says, God doesn't do that. He commands you to come to Christ. You know, he said, repent, you know, and, and be baptized. And, uh, and I believe with all of my heart that Jesus is coming soon. Let me see if I can find, pardon the top of my head here, folks. And this is a, it's a very casual program. <laughs> And by the way, thank you all for your great comments in the in the last few weeks. And I do, I do read them. And what a blessing! Sometimes I just sit there and cry, and I look at these comments. And, and uh, I'm very, very thankful for you. And it was something that I just felt in my heart I'd like to do. And.
Let me pray with you. Father God, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jesus, for giving your life on that cross. We cannot even imagine the agony that you went through. We thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, for taking on the form of a person, of a man. And that's the only way you could pay for our sins, that you would do that. And God, who nailed you to that cross? Who put you on that cross? We did. And Father, I thank you for that. And who allowed it to happen? A heavenly Father that loved us so much, he gave his only begotten Son as a sacrifice, as a ransom for our sins that we could not pay. We owed a debt that we... that. Lord, there's no way that we could have paid it, and we thank you for that. You paid for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us your life, so we give you our life in return. I give you everything that I have. Accept me, Lord, as I accept you as my personal Savior. Say that to the Lord today. Receive him as Lord of your life. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. For indeed, we believe that you lived on this earth, and you died, and that you rose again, and we thank you for it. Indeed, in Jesus' name, indeed, he is risen. Praise the Lord. And let me tell you something. You don't need anything else. If you receive Christ as Lord of your life, you have a relationship. Just talk to him like Dallas in, in, in his own frustration. You, you can sometimes, it's okay to, to be upset sometimes. Lord, help me in this situation. And that's really what supplication is. Oh God, we need your help today. Lord, help me. How would you say it? Lord, what would you do? And he'll talk to you. I promise you that. He can have a relationship with Christ. And you don't need anything else. You don't need all these other things, Scientology and all these other things. Uh, to be successful in life. In fact, a lot of Scientology, uh, from what I understand, will teach you that you can be a Christian and embrace Scientology, but you, that's not true. Or you can be a Scientologist and, and embrace Christianity, but you can't really um, uh, be a Christian and embrace anything else. That's one thing about being a Christian. It's a stubborn religion, but we have a stubborn God with a stubborn love that loves you very, very much with an everlasting love. And I promise you, if you accept him today, he'll never let you down, ever. Thank you, Lord, for that in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you, folks, and happy Easter. He is risen, and thanks for joining me on my Sunday string-along.